Hey guys, you're watching Scuff on Bite Size TV. Today on Scuff, we're getting a little taste test of a feature length doco that's road showing around Australia at the moment called Uncharted Waters. It's about legendary Aussie surfer Wayne Lynch and we find out about his upbringing on the Aussie South Coast and also why he was considered an outlaw for a couple of years during the Vietnam War. Before we check out Uncharted Waters, here's some highlights from the Byron Bay Surf Festival where the movie recently premiered in late October. Real honor to come up to Byron and enjoy the uh, Byron Surf Festival. You know, having a focal point like the festival, I mean, that's, that's the best part of it, too. Brings the people together. The first person that really got me into big wave, genuinely big, like 10 foot, was John Money. He was a brilliant surfer, way ahead of his time, and a goofy foot, which made a big difference to me, being a goofy foot. I think all surfers in those early days, we, we fancied ourselves as weathermen. And because I like big waves, I had a look at the maps of Australia and had a look at where the lows were forming and headed south and probably found the biggest waves that you could ever paddle into. He was one of those people where fear didn't interfere with what he was doing. You know, I'm sure he'd feel it, but he would resolve it very quickly and easily. We were brave. We knew our capabilities. And I never ever thought that I could drown in the ocean. So all I wanted to do was be in the water on the biggest day and try and catch the biggest wave. John's gone, if you don't come out, I'll never take you surfing again. It was either come out or don't get back in the car. It sounds silly now and it's a little bit hard nosed, but like I said, we weren't there to look at waves. I'm 11 or 12. You know, I'm, I'm scared shitless, it's huge. There's nothing wrong with being soft and having good manners and helping old ladies across the street, but when it comes to the nitty gritty, you've got to have that edge. Even though you're scared, you've got to paddle that extra two or three strokes. Wayne developed that. Those waves were just unsurfed. So all those places down there, he was in and out of every nook and cranny he possibly could be. At a baby's age, really, 14, 15. And he said that was when he formed a bond with the ocean that had to be real and you had to conquer your fears. That's what bravery is, you know. You are scared, but you do it. Being left home here when you said, I'm going surfing, of course you are. But you sort of had to let him do that though, because that was, that's him. He had to go. girlfriends, you talk about surf widows, I'd go for a surf for a day and come back a week later. I think when you're in love with whatever it is you're doing, you make all sorts of sacrifices to be able to keep doing it. Sometimes it's selfish. It just is. Surfing came before everything. I can remember um, Christmas Day, my parents used to go down to Lawn, had a house there, and 
they had Christmas down there so they could actually meet him. And um, it was planned that he was coming and the wind came up behind the pier and we didn't see him. The surfing world wanted Wayne Lynch. They needed a Wayne Lynch. If there hadn't been a Wayne, he would have needed to be invented because he fits so many of those mythological niches that we have. It seemed as if Wayne Lynch had just fallen out of the sky after a long visit to the future. He was a scrawny little thing, but he had that hard edge. And all people that are successful have got a hard edge on them. John's gone, if you don't come out, I'll never take you surfing again. It was either come out or don't get back in the car. It was this really young boy who had this amazing ability. He was the golden child of Australian surfing. You can't separate Wayne Lynch's approach to the sport and his life from the Vietnam War. Opponents called it a ballad. Life. I lived as an outlaw for two and a half years and I had a beautiful sanctuary down the coast that no one knew about that was my hole in the wall. There's some really heavy spiritual thing that goes on down there and we've all been touched by it. I felt there was something primordial about it in myself that I was going to learn here. There was a word that went around. They got Wayne. Because he was so far away from everywhere else in the world, and kept himself sort of hidden. It engendered a tremendous fascination with him. The surfing world sees him as a rebel and an outsider because that's how they want to see themselves. You go, oh yeah, that's why I surf. He is like a white pointer to us that he's that one rogue element that has never really been turned into a dancing bear.